What if the past no longer exists and the future hasn't happened yet? What if the only thing that truly exists is this very moment? Welcome to Presentism, a mind-bending theory in the philosophy of time that claims only the present is real. This isn't science fiction. It's a serious idea debated by philosophers, metaphysicians, and even some physicists. In a world obsessed with future goals and haunted by past regrets, presentism dares to ask a radical question. What if there is no past to regret and no future to fear? This isn't just about time. It's about reality itself. Presentism stands in sharp contrast to eternalism, a popular theory in both physics and philosophy that says past, present, and future all exist equally. But if presentism is true, then everything you think you know about history, memory, destiny, and even who you are might be wrong. In this video, we'll explore what presentism really means, where it comes from, why it challenges modern physics, and how it might just change the way you live your life. If you've ever asked, what is time? Is the past real? Or can we trust memory? This journey is for you. So take a deep breath, forget the past for a moment, and stop worrying about tomorrow. Because according to presentism, only now matters. Presentism is the philosophical view that only the present moment is real. Not just emotionally real or psychologically relevant, ontologically real. In other words, the past no longer exists, and the future does not exist yet. Only the now has true existence. According to presentism, Abraham Lincoln is not somewhere in the past. Your next birthday does not yet exist in the future. They are both nothing more than ideas, mental constructs, or potentialities, but not real entities in the structure of time. This theory belongs to a larger field called the metaphysics of time, where thinkers debate what time actually is. Is it something that flows like a river? Or is it more like a block, where everything, past, present, and future, exists all at once? That's where the most famous rival to presentism comes in, eternalism. Eternalists argue that all points in time, yesterday, now, and tomorrow, are equally real, just like all points in space are. In the eternalist view, time is a four-dimensional block. Nothing is more real just because it's happening now. From this perspective, you're not just a present self, but a stretched out being across time. Presentism says no. It insists that only this very moment has real existence. There is no hidden archive of the past and no fixed future waiting for you. If something is not happening right now, it does not exist, period. This might sound abstract, but the implications are enormous. If presentism is correct, then we need to radically revise how we think about memory, prediction, destiny, free will, and even personal identity. Because in a presentist universe, nothing is permanent, not even the past. The roots of presentism stretch far back into the history of philosophy, long before modern physics entered the conversation. One of the earliest and most influential voices on the nature of time was St. Augustine. In his Confessions, Augustine asked a deceptively simple question, what is time? And in trying to answer it, he offered a deeply presentist insight. Augustine suggested that time is made of three parts, a present of things past, memory, a present of things present, attention, and a present of things future, expectation. In other words, even the past and the future only exist as parts of the present. You do not experience the past itself, only your memory of it, now. You do not experience the future, only your anticipation, now. Time, he argued, is something that lives in the soul, and the only thing that truly exists is the present consciousness of experience. Centuries later, the debate took on a more analytical form with philosophers like J.M.E. McTaggart. In his groundbreaking essay, The Unreality of Time, McTaggart introduced a crucial distinction between what he called the A-series and the B-series of time. The A-series includes the ideas of past, present, and future, constantly shifting and subjective. 
The B-series sees time as fixed, ordered by relations like earlier than and later than, without any special status for the present. McTaggart ultimately argued that time, especially as we know it in the A-series, is an illusion. But many presentists took his framework seriously. Not to deny time altogether, but to emphasize the privileged status of the present. For them, the flow of time is not just a trick of language or perspective. It is the essence of what is real. From Augustine's spiritual introspection to McTaggart's metaphysical rigor, one idea kept returning. If anything is truly real, it must be happening now. As elegant and intuitive as presentism might seem, it runs into serious trouble when it tries to coexist with modern physics. And the biggest challenge comes from one name, Albert Einstein. In Einstein's theory of relativity, time is not a universal constant. It is relative to your speed and position in space. Two events that appear simultaneous to you might occur at completely different times for someone else, moving at a different velocity. This is known as the relativity of simultaneity, and it shatters the idea that there's a single objective present moment that all observers share. In a presentist universe, now must be a real global slice of reality. But relativity says there is no such slice. There is no universal clock. And that leads many physicists to prefer eternalism, which fits more naturally with what's called the block universe model. A four-dimensional picture of space and time, where all events, past, present, and future, are equally real and unchanging. Time doesn't flow. It just is. But the story doesn't end there. In quantum mechanics, especially in interpretations like the collapse of the wave function, the role of observation introduces a new mystery. Some physicists argue that what's real only becomes definite at the moment of measurement, at the present. This opens a door, however narrow, for presentist ideas to make a comeback. Because if the universe only resolves its uncertainty at the point of interaction, then perhaps the now holds a unique status after all. Still, most physicists remain skeptical. They ask, if the past no longer exists, how do we explain light from stars millions of years old still reaching us? If the future isn't real, how can we make accurate predictions using deterministic laws? The tension between presentism and modern physics is unresolved. And for now, it sits at the crossroads of philosophy and science, where questions about reality, time, and perception collide, but rarely agree. If only the present is real, what does that mean for how we live our lives? According to presentism, the past is no longer real, and the future doesn't exist yet. That means the only place we can truly exist, think, feel, and act is now. This idea doesn't just live in dusty philosophy books. It echoes in mindfulness practices, existential therapy, and even self-help mantras urging us to live in the moment. But this isn't just feel-good advice. It's a radical claim about the structure of reality. If the past no longer exists, then guilt, regret, and nostalgia become phantoms, mental echoes without substance. And if the future doesn't yet exist, then anxiety, fear, and even hope rest on nothing real. They are imagined projections built on a foundation that has not yet been formed. In a presentist universe, you are not your past. You are not defined by what happened yesterday nor are you bound to what you think might happen tomorrow. Your identity, your choices, and your consciousness are grounded in the now, and only the now. This opens up profound existential freedom, but it also comes with unsettling questions. If nothing lasts beyond the present, is there such a thing as continuity of self? Are we the same person we were a minute ago? Or are we just a flickering sequence of present moments, loosely stitched together by memory? These questions matter because they shape how we understand responsibility, meaning, trauma, healing, and even love. If presentism is true, the idea of holding on to the past becomes not just unhealthy, but metaphysically impossible. And worrying about the future becomes a kind of illusion we willingly step into again and again. Whether that's liberating or terrifying is up to you. As compelling as presentism might sound, it faces serious philosophical objections. 
one of the biggest challenges is this. If only the present exists, how do we explain memory? We remember our childhood. We recount stories of history. We build our identities on things that supposedly happened before now. But if the past no longer exists, what exactly are we remembering? Are our memories accurate? Or are they just mental reconstructions of events that have vanished from reality entirely? There's also the issue of cause and effect. If the past isn't real, how do we explain the chain of causes that led to this moment? How can now be shaped by something that has no existence anymore? Presentism must walk a fine line. Denying the existence of the past without denying its influence, a move that many philosophers find deeply problematic. Then comes the problem of time travel. In science fiction, and even in some interpretations of physics, time travel depends on the past and future being actual destinations. But in a presentist framework, there's nowhere to travel to. There's no when beyond the now. Time travel becomes not just improbable, but logically incoherent. Even language gets slippery. We talk about events happening, having happened, or about to happen. Presentism forces us to rethink these tenses. If only the present is real, then the verbs we use every day are referencing things that don't exist. And finally, there's a deeper metaphysical concern. Is presentism too human-centered? Our experience of now may be biologically limited. What feels present to you may not feel present to someone moving at a different speed or standing on a different planet. Can we really base a theory of reality on such a narrow, observer-dependent slice of time? Presentism, then, may offer comfort or clarity, but it also raises profound doubts about whether our understanding of time, or even our perception of reality, is anything more than a convenient illusion. So, why does presentism matter? Because it forces us to confront something we usually take for granted, the flow of time. In a presentist universe, the past is gone, the future hasn't happened, and the only thing we truly possess is this fragile, fleeting moment. That's not just a philosophical idea. It's a challenge to how we live, how we remember, and how we plan. In a world overwhelmed by anxiety about the future and burdened by the weight of the past, presentism offers a radical clarity. If the past doesn't exist, why carry its pain? If the future hasn't yet arrived, why fear it? But this clarity comes at a cost. Presentism asks us to live without the comfort of permanence, without a solid past to rely on, without a predetermined future to aim toward. It's a vision of life where every second is born and dies alone. And yet, maybe that's exactly why it matters, because it puts the weight of existence where it belongs, right here, right now, not in what was, not in what might be, but in this breath, this choice, this heartbeat. So the question is not whether presentism is correct in some final cosmic sense. The question is, what would change if you lived as if it were? Would you be more present? Would you let go of old regrets? Would you stop waiting for a future that may never arrive? That's the challenge presentism offers, not just to our understanding of time, but to the way we live within it. If you found this idea thought-provoking, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Do you believe only the present is real? Or do you feel time is bigger than that? Let's start a conversation.